I'm Gabriela Fresquez, and this is Radar 2021. The number of Latinxes who identify as Catholic and regularly practice their faith has been declining for decades, especially among younger generations. Although you wouldn't know it by the way we flaunt our escapularios, veladoras, Virgenes de Guadalupe, Dia de los Muertos neck tattoos. In Latinx culture, Catholicism is basically its own aesthetic. My mother and my grandmother were extremely Catholic. Like to this day, my mother, my mother has Alzheimer's, but she still remembers all the saints. I went to catechism, did my first communion. I got confirmed, was baptized. Uh, you know, was told that if I, you know, touched myself in any way, shape, or form, I was going to go to hell. And uh, even with the prospect of hell, I still took the risk. And then I, my late teens, gave my life to Jesus and was in an evangelical church, Satarakata Shanda in my butt off. So lately, I've been, you know, doing a lot of meditating, a lot of meditation, um, you know, doing some uh, kundalini mantras, uh, just trying to tap into the, you know, energy in the universe. We are an antenna and we pick up on vibrations. And when you are channeling those vibrations, I think, you know, magical things happen. Now we have access to the World Wide Web where we realize not only the atrocities that were committed in the name of these religions in order to expand them. I think that the reason people are moving away is because the hypocrisy is being exposed, the history is being exposed, and now you're left with information to make your own decisions versus asme caso, and this is it. Latinxes are increasingly claiming no religion at all or are looking outside of Catholicism to have their spiritual needs met. And this dip in attendance isn't lost on the Catholic Church. Parishes around the country are actively working to stay relevant in the lives of Latinx youth. As you look out on our congregation on any given Sunday morning, we are an array of diversity of just, again, color and culture, sexual orientation, as well as faith tradition. And more recently, we realized that about 60% of our congregation of new members are coming out of a Catholic tradition. They feel the church has left them, especially around issues of women's ordination and sexual orientation. They are concerned about some of the ways the church has managed some of the problems that they have had. The churches and pastors and congregations are looking for how to invite in, especially young people, because they themselves are on such a unique adventure in, in life. One of the things that we try to do is to listen. What are your needs? What are you seeking? But part of that testimony then is helping us to create programs and opportunities to embrace and to hold tight these young people who are on such an important spiritual journey. Still, some millennials and Gen Zers are replacing traditional religiosity with spiritual practices rooted in ancestral indigenous traditions that go back generations. One of the fundamental um, ideas of Mesoamerican religion, of religion in Mexico before the arrival of the Spanish, is a kind of very powerful emotional relationship to the sacred, to the divine. So we know that Mesoamericans, the, the Mexica, Nahua, Maya peoples, they had religious images, right? They had, their deities were in the form of images and they had very tender relationships with those images where they, they cared for them. That practice and those ideas entered Roman Catholicism. They recognized that Roman Catholicism could be a place where they could continue to, to relate to the sacred in its material form. A strong belief in the spirit world has always been a part of Latinx culture. But Latin American colonizers, starting in the 16th century, vilified anyone whose spiritual practices didn't conform to white European standards, especially women. Let's be honest, the conquerors brilliantly used religion to 
take over Mexico and all its natural resources. When you've got these dudes doing it in the name of salvation, they're bringing salvation to these savages who are practicing these pagan beliefs, of course, you're saving them from themselves. You're, you're, you're civilizing them. Messing with different herbs as healing with, and their healing properties, which is what the ancestors did, and they try to erase all of that. Back in the day, people were getting burned. Women were getting burned for using herbs. You healed with an herb, you were a witch, and you were gonna get killed. Despite being maligned by Catholic colonizers for centuries, Several indigenous spiritual practices, including brujería, or witchcraft in English, are experiencing a renaissance among Latinx millennials. A stark contrast from my youth when my parents thought playing the Ouija board was a gateway to devil worship. If only they'd known about my middle school seances. Brujas of the 21st century say that the practice is a way to honor their ancestry by exploring their spiritual potential while also providing space for queer, two-spirited, or gender fluid people who've historically been excluded from most Christian faiths. A lot of us are reconnecting in ways um, because of wanting to heal, not just ourselves, but to heal our ancestral lineage. And that's a lot of why people have had an interest is they want to connect with whether it's, you know, brujeria or spiritual practices for the sake of healing more so than anything else. It's kind of been a boom in the interest, especially with accessibility, um, thanks to the internet. And I think it has helped people to see it's not just about throwing somebody in a jaw and hexing them. It's about, you know, doing things to also heal yourself and those who came before you. And I think that's also part of why it's been kept from us, uh, not just for the sake of removing our power and our connection to ancestors, um, you know, and especially removing our power from us as women, but because it inhibited people from being able to continue healing and taking care of those in their, um, you know, family, in their community. And when you do that and you destabilize the community in that way, you can do so much more, right, to get them to oblige to whatever it is that you want them to do, right? And I think that's something we have to keep in mind um, as we move forward. We have to remember that healing should be at the forefront. I just think that's one thing that I do hope people uh, take away also is use this shit to manifest some joy. Several black female artists, including Beyonce and Azalea Banks, make reference to African diasporic spirituality in their work. And there have been numerous other shout outs to brujeria in mainstream media over the last decade an indication that it's become far less fringe. There's also a strong bruja presence on TikTok, but as brujeria becomes more trendy, there's concern that its intentions and an understanding of its complex origins are getting lost. When I can buy a witchcraft starter kit on Etsy for 25 bucks, I'd say that concern is probably valid. I had a professor who taught about um different subjects on Africa. One of the classes was African spirituality. I was very disillusioned with Christianity, with your uh, secular religions. And I was looking to reconnect with something that spoke to my spirit. So when he spoke about the Yoruba religion, that really piqued my interest. And I wanted to learn more and experience more. A lot of women want to reconnect with their spiritual birthright. So they are finding different African religions or ATRs, which is African traditional religions to be a part of. There's no shame in fulfilling your spiritual destiny and not answering to others who may look down upon you because you're going against the status quo. Our belief system predates Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. During our Ma'afa, which is our transatlantic slave trade, the belief system morphed into uh, different variations wherever the African was dropped. So in Brazil, it is called Candomblé. In Haiti, it's called Haitian Voodoo. Um, in Cuba, it's called Regla de Ocha, or Lukumi. 
We believe in one supreme deity whose name is Ola Dumare. The traditional worship that we do, um, it's found in the Yoruba land of Nigeria. Unfortunately, what I find with most people who practice Abrahamic religions, they are so judgmental. They think that all we do is wear white, we sacrifice chickens, um, we're brainwashed, that we don't believe in God, which is the furthest thing from the truth. If I see your light, if I see that you are doing well, if I see that you are prospering, you are healthy, then I'm gonna come to you and say, hey, What's your religion, if you don't mind me asking, or your belief system? Because I would like to tap into that same power and get that same type of peace. When West African religious traditions arrived in the Americas alongside the African slave trade, they combined with Catholicism, forming religious practices like Brazilian candomblé, Haitian voodoo, and Cuban santeria. Turns out santeria is far more than just a sublime song millennials like to sing after too many hard kombuchas. It's a thriving religion still practiced today. A lot of people mistakenly think that it's the worshiping of Catholic saints because you'll see a lot of people who, especially Cuban people, who will be like, oh, today is La Virgen de Mercedes, or today that, in reality, that has nothing to do with Santeria. The Orishas, which are the deities in Santeria, are all connected to things in nature. And those things in nature are the things that we try to bring you closer to, to manifest your own spiritual power. So the Catholic symbolism came about because it was like a means to an end. Santeria was not legal for a very long time, but before that, the slave masters wouldn't let these slaves practice their religion because it would scare them. So they would see them having these rituals out in the fields and they outlawed it. To combat that, the slaves started disguising the Orishas behind Catholic saints. Catholicism was brought over to kind of control everyone. I'm what's called a Santera Completa, which means I'm a Santera Palera and I have Cuchillo, so I can have godchildren. Santeria will show you or teach you how to get in touch with your spiritual ancestors, like the people who walk with you. We believe that Olofi, or God, has already predestined the kind of spiritual people you're gonna need in your life. In our home, we work a lot with La Mesa Blanca, which has to do with misas, connecting with your ancestors, uh, figuring out who's in your spiritual room so that you can break generational curses and progress in this life because we are of the belief that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. When you crown santo and you do things like that, it's connecting you to source, to whatever the orisha who, who guides you wants you to learn. It has a very negative connotation. It's very attached to like charlatans, like I'm gonna be wearing a turban and 10,000 collares and I'm gonna, that's not what at the base santeria is. Santeria is a very spiritual process in which you connect with Orisha and your beings that guide you. All of the Orishas have a home in something in nature. Ochun is in the river, Yamaya is in the ocean. I do feel like that religion, more spiritualism at the core, all has to do with nature. Europeans often outlawed West African and indigenous religions, and the bad press they kicked up centuries ago still impacts attitudes today. Which religion got it the worst? Mm, hard to say, but my guess would be Haitian voodoo. Let's do a quick thought experiment. Close your eyes. Now, what's the first thing you think of when you hear the word voodoo? What images pop into your head? Was it voodoo dolls, chicken bones, Louisiana swamp magic? Regardless of what you imagine, it's most likely something you got from the entertainment industry. See, Hollywood has long been using voodoo in the role of scary magic. From movies like Serpent and the Rainbow, Weekend at Bernie's, Chucky, and even Disney's The Frog Princess, voodoo is always depicted as a dark art form that deals in curses, death, and necromancy. But just how accurate is Tinseltown's depiction of voodoo? Honestly, I wouldn't know because I was raised Christian in Haiti and was taught to avoid voodoo like the plague. Instead, I decided to interview a fellow Haitian, an expert in all things voodoo. Actually, it's voodoo and not voodoo, because there's a whole lot of history behind the word 
phonetically how it sounds, where it comes from, what it means, and what it's been used for. So my grandmother was actually a mumble. It would be a spiritual priestess in the Vodou religion. Um, it's part of our family. I was actually the first one born in the church. You know, I respect everyone's religion. I'm actually Buddhist myself. My grandmother used to always talk to us about Vodou. I wasn't allowed to be around when it was being practiced at times. My mom was, you know, a Christian. And I feel like it's my social civic duty as a Haitian American who has knowledge at my fingertips. I have books to know more about my culture, especially how others are speaking on it. And then for me to also go and experiment and see what it is. There's the idea of, of course, the Catholic Church wanting power in Haiti and taking over. What, was, what would happen was a sort of like anything that was African, anything that was folkloric, they would take it and demonize it. It's bad, it's the devil, it's all this stuff. So it, it made it so that you cannot even practice. So everything became in secret. You know, we had to supplement different, you know, white uh, gods or white, I guess the Mary for, you know, the black Madonna, all these different, you know, deities would change and flip it so, you know, we could practice and open so the French wouldn't kill us and all that good stuff. For the past few years, I've been reading up on Vodou, trying to talk to a lot of people that have knowledge about it so I can get a better understanding of it. I think it's time that we take back our power because it makes no sense that we know about other different religions Right? But then Vodou, which isn't even a religion, we we're convinced that it's a religion. The origin of Vodou, it's not a religion, it is a way of life. Thank you so much. It's very helpful to have it. And please go ahead and say it like how you want people to say it. Because I think a lot of people are still saying it wrong. I'm still saying it wrong. I'm still saying Voodoo wrong. How would you want people to say it? It's, it's Vodou. Much like in the case of the do it yourself Bruja boxes sold by Amazon and others. As quickly as these ancestral practices are being reclaimed, they're also being co-opted and commodified. There's something that feels kind of off about purchasing a shamanic healer package with a bonus piece of Palo Santo alongside antiperspirant at a Walgreens, or at all. You can plant and grow these medicines anywhere. We're not worried that they're going to totally like die off. The issue is that when these medicines are misused and there's a mockery and a um, a misappropriation of native culture. It is a, it dehumanizes indigenous communities. My name is Chelsea Luger. I'm Lakota and Anishinaabe. There's also no regard for the history that we've been through with our spiritual practices being illegal until 1978 with the American Indian Religious Freedoms Act, that you can't just pop a pill of spirituality and just pick up a quote unquote sage kit from urban outfitters. Like you need to understand the actual culture, the history, the context. You can't practice these things in a vacuum. And so without that connection to the community where the practice of smudging with sage comes from, then it becomes appropriation. And in the $11 billion wellness industry, people are uh, misappropriating and selling indigenous spirituality in any way that they can. If you haven't been raised with the medicine, then it's really best to just avoid it and use restraints. Of course, none of this comes as a complete shock given the value of the global spirituality and wellness market. And spiritual tourism is another way ancestral traditions are being marketed to the masses, aka descendants of colonizers who banned these practices in the first place. Funny how some white people will pay a lot of money to be spiritually enlightened by the same people they tried to keep out with a wall. So in spiritual tourism, I think it's just a cultural appropriation, but on the road. Mostly it traffics in bringing mostly white people to the global south to engage in indigenous ancestral healing practices under this broad uh, mishmash of new age spirituality. Among the trendiest forms of spiritual tourism are ayahuasca ceremonies. And having been told by a lot of white people who go there just for this, that this is going to be a cure-all, it can be healing, but it's to look at something that communities have practiced for thousands of years, cultivated a relationship with the rainforest for thousands of years, especially now today, where a lot of these leaders in these communities are being killed for protecting the very rainforest. Ayahuasca tourism begs the question, can it be done ethically by outsiders? If people see that another race of people are coming who automatically they're like, that's money and we need that, um, then it, displacement is going to happen. The, why do you have to go so far away to appropriate something else and think that the cure to all of your white people problems is something hidden in a forest far away? 
if what you have to gain is personal for you, personal gain, personal healing, and it's not done in a communal sense, then what are we actually healing? Although Latinxes are increasingly ditching traditional Catholicism, we still make up a significant chunk of the Catholic Church demo. So tell your abuela not to douse you in holy water just yet. Hola, abuela, bendición. Hola, mi niño. Dios te me bendiga y te proteja. Y el Señor te cubra con su santo manto y te libre de todo mal. Abuela, are you okay? Hey. Oh, you're sleeping. Ay, mijo, no. Estoy rezando. Déjame quieta. Ay, perdón. You scared me. Este rosario, your uncle brought it from his trip to Rome. Y este rosario I got in el mercado. It's a little cheaper, so I don't like my church friends seeing me with this one. Abuela, I'm bored and you have no cable or Wi-Fi here. Who needs cable or Wi-Fi when you got the Bible? Here you go. Read it para que te entretenga. Mm. I have an audition tomorrow, so wish me luck. Ah, pues mira, voy a prender estas velitas para que el Señor te bendiga y te dé buenas oportunidades. Mira, te tengo un chisme. ¿Qué pasó? So you remember María? And she said no. No me diga. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's an uptick among younger generations of black, indigenous, and Latinx people who are reclaiming the spiritual practices of their ancestors is a pretty solid indication that years of feeling excluded by the church have built up to this moment. Despite colonizers' attempts to demonize and eradicate many of our ancestral religions, they've endured through the centuries, and that's powerful. I'm Gabriela Fresquez for Radar 2021. Thanks for watching Radar 2021. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below, and let us know what issues are important to you. Because let's be honest, there are a lot of issues to choose from. <laughs> so, so many.